Welcome to the latest Evershare Sutherland Legal Insights podcast. And the advertisement said, we need a young and dynamic professional and the ideal candidate has to be young and dynamic. And I suppose it was fine there that people who are middle aged or old are, were excluded from qualification for the position and this amounted to discrimination. So I think it's just always really important to be aware of the language used in job advertisements. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first in our series of short podcasts designed to give our listeners bite-sized key points on the differences and similarities between employment law in the U.S. and Ireland. My name is Bonnie Burke. I am an employment lawyer from Evershed Sutherland, based out of our Atlanta, Georgia office in the U.S., and I'm joined today by my esteemed colleague from across the pond, Emma Quinn. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, As Bonnie said, my name is Emma Quinn and I'm an associate on the employment team in the Dublin office in Ireland. Uh, So today we're going to be speaking about recruitment processes in Ireland and the US. So as an employer, when kicking off a recruitment process, it's really important to be aware of certain legal pitfalls when hiring a new employee, uh, job advertisements, interviews, carrying out background checks. All of these should be done in a way that meets legal requirements. Uh, so, Bonnie, from a US perspective, I suppose, what's the first thing that US employers should be aware of when kicking off a recruitment process? Thanks, Emma. I think there are lots of things to be thinking of. Globally, the U.S. was slow to join the DEI movement, but it's made pretty good strides since joining in. I've heard from clients who've wondered whether they can set standards for diversity, which end up looking a little bit like quotas. And the answer to that is no. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled last summer that colleges and universities cannot use quotas when admitting students. And as employment lawyers, we were watching that case pretty carefully because it could have had implications on employment recruiting and hiring. So, Where we are now is that employers can go out and recruit in specific areas, talking to specific groups of people to increase the diversity of their applicant pool. But once the applicants are actually in the pool, they've applied for employment, the process must be free from discrimination. So quotas are not permitted and the selection must be based on the qualifications of the candidate and those necessary for the specific position. I know that the workforce shortage has been really tough on U.S. employers, and they've really kind of struggled not just to have diversity in their applicant pool, but to have an applicant pool at all. So thinking about this, Emma, what about in Ireland? What's the most important consideration when we're thinking about recruiting and hiring? Um, I suppose in Ireland, uh, discrimination considerations are also very important. And the risk of discrimination really has to be considered right at that job advertisement stage. And I suppose a good example that I always talk about is uh, a case that was brought uh, against Ryanair way back in 2001. And it was in relation to their job advertisement for a director of regulatory affairs. And the advertisement said, we need a young and dynamic professional and the ideal candidate has to be young and dynamic. And I suppose it was fine there that people who are middle aged or old are, were excluded from qualification for the position and this amounted to discrimination. So I think it's just always really important to be aware of the language used in job advertisements. And I think that's applicable in the U.S. as well. It's something you need to think about. How are you describing the candidate? Are you describing who the appropriate candidate is? They really should be specific to the the job requirements and free from discrimination here as well. Yeah, absolutely. And Bonnie, are there any legal stipulations or, or discrimination considerations around job advertisements in the U.S.? Anything specific to consider? Well, several states in the U.S. now have laws pertaining to when, how, and what must be posted for job openings. It's kind of a handful of states. It does seem to be an increasing trend. In some of these states, there's a salary range that must be posted with the job opportunity or at least reasonably available upon request by the candidate. 
Though if a candidate has additional qualifications, employers can offer more than the posted salary range. Some states are requiring internal posting happening at the same time as external posting and some additional notifications to internal employees. That actually sounds really similar to what's coming down the tracks in in Ireland. I think at the moment we're really considering the the EU's pay transparency directive, you know, as we have to transpose that into our national legislation by June 2026. And I suppose what that means for Irish employers is that organisations are going to be required to provide information on pay ranges as part of the recruitment process. And we're actually no longer going to be able to ask candidates about their current pay to determine uh, offers. Is there anything similar uh, to that in the US, Bonnie? But can you, are you able to ask a candidate about their prior salary? Actually, asking a candidate about their prior salary at a past employer is prohibited in several states under state law. And depending on the circumstances, it may even be prohibited under federal Equal Pay Act. The thinking is that if the prior salary was based on discriminatory considerations, using that salary as a starting point for the candidate's salary at the the current employer, the, an interviewing employer, would continue that discrimination, whether the employer, the new prospective employer, knows it or not. It doesn't mean that candidates can't volunteer their past salary. And if they do, the interviewer can ask, well, on what are you basing that request? And then they can share it with you that that might be a past salary. But the application, if you are a company that uses an application, should not ask for past salary amounts. And the interviewer should not be asking that question either. And while this is the law in several states and it is a building trend, it should be something that employers are taking a look at to make sure that they are applying consistently just so that candidates are being treated the same kind of across the country with respect to those interviewing processes. I did see an agency investigator impose a salary history ban in a state where there actually wasn't one. So it's not always easy to predict when that standard is going to be held applicable. So unless you find it necessary and you're really looking closely at the individual jurisdictions, probably best just to not ask that question on applications or in the interview process. So just a quick funny, employer asks candidate why they're asking for such a high salary when they have no experience for the particular position. And the candidate answers, well, the job's a lot harder when you don't know what you're doing. You know, it's really important to remember that employment lawyers can be funny too. (laughs) Thank you for that. (laughs) And I think as we're, we're thinking about tips for the interview process, what would be some of your top tips for carrying out interviews in Ireland, Emma? Um, I suppose my top tip, Bonnie, would be you have to keep detailed notes. And I think these are really important, you know, in the event of a candidate querying the selection decision or if they're requesting feedback. And I think it's always important to bear in mind that a candidate can also make a data subject access request under the GDPR. So it's really important to stay clear of any inappropriate lines of questioning and, you know, don't note anything that could be considered discriminatory, you know, like long periods of sick leave or has a child or pregnancy related questions and and things like that. Um, From your perspective, Bonnie, do you have any top tips for for carrying out interviews in, in, in the States? I think a lot of those same tips hold true in the U.S. as well. Even though you want to get to know the candidate on a more personal level to see if they're going to be a good fit professionally, personally, within the culture of your company, a lot of those questions are just not appropriate. If you're asking them about marital status, family status, unless they come walking in with a limp or some obvious disability, you don't want to be asking them if they have a disability, though certainly If you have a standardized question to interviewees about whether they feel they can perform the functions of the job with or without an accommodation, that might be a reasonable question to ask. But basically, yeah, those are the same things. We don't see a lot of discrimination claims coming out of the interview process. But if you hire a candidate and there has been some sort of inappropriate question, it's the kind of thing that later on down the line, if there's an issue, you tend to see that situation rear its ugly head and the employee is happy to remind the employer of that inappropriate question or conduct during the interview process. Absolutely. It's probably similar in Ireland, like there, 
kind of discrimination claims would would rear their head kind of every now and again during the recruitment process, but 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 they, they wouldn't be as common. So I suppose if if an employer gets through the interview process, you know, I think background checks are always a, a, a hot topic in Ireland, particularly as we, we have no general mechanism for carrying out criminal background checks. So in Ireland, a lot of employers kind of ask their candidates to complete a criminal conviction self-declaration, confirming, you know, if they have any pending convictions or court actions. Would, would it be similar in the in the US, Bonnie? What's what's the position on on criminal background checks? No, that's interesting. So at the application stage in the U.S., employers should not be asking about criminal arrests or convictions. Most states do have what's called the ban the box law, and that prohibits employers from asking about those background checks until they have at least made an offer of employment. Unless, of course, the position is something security sensitive or where really the background check, the criminal background check is going to be key to them getting the position. But generally, once you make an offer of an employment, the employer can then ask if there have been any criminal convictions or arrests and do that background check and get some information. And on a state-by-state basis, what they're allowed to ask for specifically, kind of how far back they can go, et cetera, can be different from state to state. Most states will limit the conversation about what can be looked into to actual convictions. A lot of the other types of of things, arrests and things, can just be a matter of a person being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and we can see sort of a, a disparate impact there. So really, convictions tends to be the thing that they can ask about. Well, I think in closing, even if we don't often see a candidate bring claims for discrimination, as we mentioned, you know, it might be one of those things that comes back later on and can be raised by an actual employee if there's an issue that comes up during their employment. People don't really forget how they've been treated and how you make them feel as an employer. Emma, do you have any last thoughts about this interview process? I think it's really important, you know, if any of our listeners have any doubts or, you know, have a tricky recruitment situation that you just really take advice at an early stage just to avoid, I suppose, any of the recruitment pitfalls that, that Bonnie and I have touched on today. And I think that's it for today, Bonnie. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the first episode in our podcast series. And please join us again soon for more conversations across the pond. This podcast is presented by Evershed Sutherland and is for informational purposes only. The content of this podcast is not intended to constitute legal advice or a recommended course of action in any given situation. This podcast is not intended to be and should not be relied upon by the recipient in making decisions of a legal nature with respect to the issues discussed herein. The listener is encouraged to consult independent legal counsel before making any decision or taking any action concerning the matters discussed in the podcast. This podcast does not create an attorney-client relationship between Evershed Sutherland and the listener. 